I was fascinated by Dr. King much of my life. You know, uh, all sorts of degrees, could have been a nice, in a nice, safe, upper middle class uh, uh, parish. Instead, had not only himself, but his biological family on death threat most of their adult lives. How could you do that? Here's how I realized how he could do it. He realized his biological dependents weren't his only family. Not here. Here he realized it. That's what Jesus died to tell us. That's what King died to tell us. Um, so that's what I would have people work through or ignore, but I have nothing else to offer besides that. And by the way, I think Jesus didn't either, and neither did King and neither did Gandhi. That's the whole deal. As a, again, not to be self-deprecating, the most incredibly selfish, self-indulged little boy that you could imagine, somehow I became aware of the Holocaust through all my self-indulgence. Maybe it was reading the book Diary of Anne Frank, I'm not sure. But it penetrated me very deeply and uh, when uh, about, well it must have been uh, 2000, I don't often think about these things and uh, it gets to some very deep wells that I forget about. So when in 2003, 2004, the genocide in Darfur um, came to me with my newly awakening humanity, um, it turns out I couldn't not devote my every fiber of my being to fighting it. And I was in front of the White House when it popped out at me, okay, you need to be in front of the Sudanese embassy and you need to be on hunger strike in the prayer that your exercising of that kind of humanity will prick the heart of both George Bush, who will probably come to know of it, that could stop it, and the Sudanese ambassador, who might be a direct line to the heart of the apparently heartless al-Bashir, who's been perpetrating this genocide. I walked with signage and a sleeping bag in which I could sit up, not lie down, and, and uh, commenced what was a 45-day water-only um, hunger strike uh, that probably came close to claiming my life. What happened? It wound up in a major article in the Washington Post. Uh, it wound up in a, in a nationally heard piece on, on NPR. Um, it, uh, it unquestionably pricked the heart of all of the aristocracy that drives up and down uh, Massachusetts Avenue to and from the State Department and the White House and the world's embassies every day. So the, the question that love asks in that situation, the question a mother asks is not how am I gonna stop this? The question that, that the parent asks is what's my best attempt regardless of the personal cost? And, and that was my attempt. And, uh, by all measures I can think of, was it the right attempt for one individual with the resources, abilities I had? My goodness, it was. But start, I can't do that. I've got my biological dependents. That's the tough one. And, and when I departed on this journey, when I, when I continued on, when I allowed myself to continue on this journey, um, in my mind I had accumulated enough wealth that I could give it to those who were my, my biological dependents and married dependent, and that they could continue on with their life. Had I not been in that position, would I have had enough love to, to go on the departure? only if I had had an extreme amount of love. Gandhi, in basically bare feet in a loincloth, walking when there were cars available, many, many, many miles and days from where he was in India to the sea to pick up salt, was an arduous journey. He was a very literate man. He was a, he was a lawyer by training. He walked and he picked up salt. 
and it and it, it it's what a human being would do and it transformed the minds of millions college students going down to the going down to the south during the civil rights movement uh, many of them, the cream of our, sec of our society with lots of skills, went and sat in at, uh, at lunch counters and let themselves get brutalized. What? They could have gone and, you know, worked on Wall Street and made lots of money and, and uh, sent checks. But they didn't. They went and did, did what a brother would do, what a human being would do when they needed to save thousands or millions. Um, it fascinates me. It's not that our, our skills aren't useful, but what we need to do, we need to be brothers. We need to be family. Not because it's some maudlin thing. It is the highest form of human intelligence. it is the highest form of motivation. It's where miracles come from in industry, in personal life, in family life, and Jesus believed we could do it on a mass scale. Jesus believed we were born to do it on a mass scale. So did King, so did, so did Gandhi. Eleanor Roosevelt lived it, Teresa of Calcutta lived it, 